see you in hell. When TNT came aboard with the 5th year of Babylon 5, they were looking for ways to make an event out of the launch of the show. They knew they were giving us our fifth year. What could we give them in return? And they said, how about a prequel? I always wanted to do a story that would let us use the resources we had to create a story that would set in motion the saga of Babylon 5. The story itself is ingenious in that it, it goes to the future to explain the past. For a lot of us working on the show, reading this made a whole lot of things click into place. You see all the parts and pieces you allude to over the course of the five years, but you never actually saw. The way that Joe was able to take the threads of what had been set up in the gathering and the storyline of Commander Sinclair and how Bruce's character wove in and out of this and where Jakar was in this, it really was well orchestrated storytelling. Working on In the Beginning was really a labor of love for us because all of a sudden we had the characters that we knew really well and we were going back into their past. This is where we learn where John Sheridan got his his moniker of Star Killer by the Mimbari, where uh, we actually enact the uh, taking out of the Black Star, their biggest ship. With all due respect to other fine directors who worked on Babylon 5, Mike was my favorite director and still is because Mike had an almost telepathic understanding of what I was trying to do with the show. I want a story about great battles and wars and bravery and heroes and villains. I was mesmerized by uh, Peter Jurisic's portrayal of Londo. A story about great deeds, great empires, terrible mistakes. I felt like the little kids sitting there listening to the story. I just loved hearing it. And I think actually one of them was Joe's favorite too, the one where Lando's character talks about the lengths that the human race went to in their fight to survive. The humans, I think, knew they were doomed. But where another race would surrender to despair, the humans fought back with even greater strength. It was really a compelling story. And I think in that same sequence uh, is when the president of Earth gave the call to arms for everyone to go and defend Earth uh, that one last time. So I, I think those are probably, for me, the most memorable. You think in, in television, after you've been doing a show for a while, it, it would get easier. No, it gets way harder and way harder as you go along. In fact, the crew, the crew actually, when they uh, showed up uh, after lunch with caps, it all made up. See, I've been very hard on the front of it because he made all of his nuts but the result was always eminently worth it. The terrible truth that no one knows but that I will tell you is that the blood of many who died in that war is on my hands. There's a lot of uh, exposition in, in our story to try and fill in the blanks, and I think any other approach to trying to do that would have not been as interesting as, as what he you know, finally decided to do. And it was just a pleasure for me to get a chance to realize the words. We went through a lot of our mythology and it all started to really make some sense. Now, and I, I have to hand to Joe the, his genius in putting all of that together. He will have to be watched to ensure that he does not remember. Leave that to me. It let me prove the point, well, this really is one big tapestry and story. I'll prove it to you by taking all these disparate episodes and tying them together into one nice neat little package for you. Like all good things, it took them a while to work it all out.